So we are going to talk about the dot product and how it's important in vector calculus. Now the reason we came up with the dot product is that the idea of multiplying two numbers doesn't translate very well to multiplying two vectors. So instead, we've come up with different notions of the product that are useful to us when we're looking at vector calculus. So first of all, if we're looking at a vector a1, a2, and another vector b1, b2, if we take the dot product, we'll denote that by putting a dot between them. And this is going to be equal to a1, b1, plus a2, b2. So notice what's happened here is we took the x components of each vector, multiplied them together. Then we took the y components, multiplied those together, and we added them up at the end. So this is the definition of the dot product. Everything we're doing here is in two dimensions, but we can expand all these ideas to any number of dimensions that we want. Now we're going to prove a couple of properties of the dot product that will help us get an understanding of what exactly this is. First of all, let's think about what happens if we take a vector and dot it with itself. So if we have a1, b1, let's call this vector our a vector, and we'll denote that it's a vector by putting an arrow on top of it. Now if we take our vector a and find the dot product with the exact same vector. That's going to be a1, a2, dotted with a1, a2. If we do that out, we'll get a1 times a1, which is a1 squared, plus a2 squared from the same process. And remember, what is the magnitude of a? Well, the magnitude of a, from our last video, is the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared. You can check the description for an explanation of that. But notice what's happened here. a1 squared plus a2 squared is exactly what we have in the square root. So if we were to take that magnitude of a and square it, that would be exactly what we get here. So notice a dotted with itself is equal to the magnitude of a squared. And that's going to be pretty important in a moment. Now what we want to look at next is how the dot product distributes when we're adding things together. So if we take the a vector and dot it with b plus c, where b and c are two different vectors. Let's take a look at what happens when we do this out. a is going to be a1, a2, and then we're going to dot that with, if our b vector right here is b1, b2, and our c vector is c1, c2, then when we add those together, remember we add the x components and then we add the y components. So on the inside here, we'll have b1 plus c1, b2 plus c2, just like that. When we take the dot product of these two, we're going to follow the same formula that we had up here. So that's going to give us the two x components multiplied together, a1, b1, plus a1, c1. And then we'll add the y components multiplied together. So a2, b2, plus a2, c2. Now, if we look at a1, b1, plus a2, b2, that's exactly what we have for the dot product of our vector a dotted with our vector b. And if we have a1, c1 times a2, c2, that's going to be the same as our vector a dotted with c. So this is the formula for what happens when we have a dotted with b plus c. So notice what happens here is that we basically distribute the dot product into each of those vectors in the parentheses. So now that we have these two properties ready, it's time to get to the big finale of what the dot product actually is. In order to do that, we're going to take a geometric approach. Let's say we have our first vector like this, a, and then we have a second vector that looks like this, and we'll call it c. What would happen if we drew a vector just like that? Well, if we follow the path of a up here and then follow the path of c back down, that's going to be the same as adding the two vectors. So this vector right here that follows that path and goes from the start to the end is a plus c. So if we call this vector b, 
and we say b is equal to a plus c, what is c in that case? Well, in order to do that, we can just subtract a from both sides. If we do that, we see that c is equal to b minus a. If we just move that a over to the left side. Now we're going to do a little bit of triangle stuff on our vector setup here. If we call this angle on the inside theta, notice that we have three different lengths that form a triangle. So in this case, we can use the law of cosines. Now the law of cosines says that the length of this third side, which is the magnitude of b minus a, since that's this side here, squared is going to equal the magnitude of a squared, this side here, plus the magnitude of b squared, this other side, minus 2 magnitude of a, magnitude of b, cosine theta, just like this. Now we're just going to take a look at some of the properties we've already proven and plug them into the formula that we have here. First of all, what is the magnitude of a squared? Well, that's just a dot a. So we can plug that in right away. Then plus the magnitude of b squared is going to be b dotted with b. And then we have the same thing over here. Now if we look at the magnitude of b minus a squared, we can follow the same formula as what we have right here. That's going to be b minus a dotted with itself, b minus a. And this is where the magic happens. Because remember that this is a dot product, and when we have a dot product, we can distribute this addition. So right here, we can expand this just like we would expand any other polynomial. So if we look at this, if we FOIL this out, first we have the two b's, so that's going to give us b dotted with b. Then we can add a dotted with a, since the negatives will cancel out. And then we'll have to subtract 2 times a dot b. So this is the exact same thing that we get as if we just had b minus a times b minus a as numbers. Then that's going to equal what we have on the right side. So notice on the left side we have a b dot b, and on the right side we have a b dot b. So those are going to cancel out. On the left side we have an a dot a, on the right side we have an a dot a. Those are going to cancel out. All we have left is negative 2 a dot b equals negative 2 magnitude of a, magnitude of b, cosine theta. Of course, those negative 2s are going to cancel out, and we get our final identity. a dotted with b is always equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine of theta. In this case, theta is the angle between the two vectors a and b. So now we see why the dot product is so important. It's because of this final identity here. a dot b equals the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine theta. This cosine theta means that we can use that dot product to judge the angle between two vectors. The most important application of that angle finding ability is when we find whether two vectors are perpendicular. Now we're all cool because we're in vector calculus, so we don't call it perpendicular anymore. We call it orthogonal. So if we want to find whether two vectors are orthogonal, what we can do is think about the cosine of theta. If we have a right angle between two vectors like this, what is the cosine of pi over 2, or the cosine of 90 degrees? Well, that's going to be 0. So if we plug in 0 to this cosine of theta, this whole dot product is going to end up disappearing. What that means is that if our dot product is equal to 0, then our two vectors must have been perpendicular, as long as they're not just 0 themselves. So we can think about an example in this case. If we look at the vectors 2, 3, and 6, negative 4, what happens when we take the dot product of these two vectors? We take 2, 3 dotted with 6, negative 4. Well, first we're going to multiply the x components. So we'll have 2 times 6, which is 12. And then we're going to add 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. That means that these two added together is going to be 0. If this dot product is 0, these vectors are orthogonal. And we can actually see that 
if we draw out each of the vectors. 2, 3 is going to look like this, and 6, negative 4 is going to be pointing downward. It's going to be right here. And we see a very nice right angle between those two vectors because their dot product is 0. So these are the fundamental properties of dot products, especially this identity here that has to do with the cosine of the angle between two vectors. And the dot product has some very cool applications when we start talking about the equations of planes, as well as some really cool stuff far out in the future.